All right, so let's transition. MMA, what else we got? Uh, well, let's see here, Mike. Uh, well, 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 all right, I'm looking at the notes. Let's start with this. Last week, there was the press conference with Khabib and Dustin Poirier. We haven't done a show since then. I watched that. It was in London. Um, of course, the, the, the pace and the feel of this press conference was much, much different to Khabib's couple of press conferences with Conor McGregor of course you know when Conor shows up we know we know what you're in for he's going to come out he's going to talk shit he's going to say controversial things and you know love him or hate him McGregor puts on a show and he makes those press conferences really really fun to watch uh, and that's what I try to do in my day as well not copy McGregor just try try and make it entertaining I mean I walk out there and just just like McGregor you walk out there onto a stage and there's a ton of media there, there's people, there's fans. And if you're just going to sit there and go, yeah, no, yes, it's going to be a great fight. It's kind of boring, you know, but I get it. It's not everybody's personality. With McGregor, it was must watch TV. It really was. That's why uh, I think when the UFC was with Fox Sports, they would air the press conferences on Fox Sports, not just on YouTube. They showed them on Fox Sports. Now, Khabib isn't that type of guy, you know, and he does take a certain type of guy to go out there uh, and, and be loud and obnoxious for want of a better word you know I did it myself a lot of people do but Dustin Poirier isn't that guy Khabib isn't that guy so the the highlight and I did see it I, I, I did see it as I said I watched it on YouTube I was somewhere traveling um, he said because people were talking about the the, the Conor rematch and it's got to be frustrating for Khabib because all people talk to him about is the Conor rematch. And even while Dustin Poirier is sitting there, who's the interim champion and the right person to fight him, even though Tony Ferguson is lingering and deserves the fight, Dustin's the interim champ. Simple as that. He gets it. He gets the next shot. They asked him about McGregor. McGregor said, the last three years, uh, he has only one victory, an amateur boxing. How does he deserve rematch? He tapped. He begged me. Please don't kill me. Now he's talking about rematch. Come on. No rematch. I agree. Can't argue with that logic. Now, I don't know if McGregor did say he tapped, he begged, please don't kill me. <laughs> did he say I, that? Do you think he said, please don't kill me? I don't think he said that. No, I think in Khabib's like crazy Russian, like I'm never tapping, you're going to need to put me out if you want me to go out. He's saying that tapping is saying, please don't kill me. Anytime someone taps, that's all they're saying. I think that's Khabib talking a little bit of trash, if I'm honest. You know, but, but good it. for him. It was the best part of the prop uh, of, of the press conference. So anyway, so Poirier versus him, and in, in, in versus Khabib. Yes, Harrison. So I guess that's my question, Mike. Like, would you? I, I know you're what you're saying is like it's not their job to put on entertaining press conferences, but everybody showing up to the Dustin Poirier versus Khabib press conference and talking about Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson, any of the other options at lightweight. Isn't it in Dustin Poirier's best interest right now to do something crazy like try and bite Khabib's ankles or do something insane? Or is the beatdown that he gave McGregor like scary, like scaring guys away from trying to pull that shit with Khabib? Well, if you're Dustin Poirier, I mean, I hear what you're saying. So, so, so what you're saying is, you know, Khabib, sorry, pardon me, Dustin should have taken that moment, that opportunity on the press, on the dais, on, in front of the world's media to start talking some shit, to, 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 to make it personal, to get some headlines or whatever. But what's he achieving? He's already fighting for the belt. He's already the interim champion. All Dustin's got to do right now is win that fight. Now, of course, for me, Dustin isn't thinking like this right now. The, all Dustin's thinking about is being the champion, uh, solidifying his journey and reaching that goal, that target. You know, most fighters, when they start, they want to be world champion one day. And Dustin, he kind of had a career like mine. You know, he was he was, he was a very, very good fighter, but he was, you know, he, he lost a few key matchups. And now here he is having a resurgence late in his career. He's up at 155. He's looking at better than ever. He looks incredible. His performance against Max Holloway was just a beautiful performance. It really was. I and mean, I actually thought Holloway would win that fight, if I'm honest. I even told Theo Vaughn, who's a massive cheerleader of Dustin Poirier, who was flying to that fight just to watch Theo Vaughn. He messaged me and said, you think Dustin's going to win? And I said, no. You know what I mean? Because I really didn't. But Dustin went out there, proved me wrong, proved, I would say, most of the world wrong and beat Max Holloway. And now he gets the title fight. So I don't think he's interested in you know talking shit right now he's got a goal in mind 
he's got that world title on his mind and that's all he wants so he doesn't want to waste energy he's not trying to make a fool out of himself and Khabib's the type of guy that you've got to respect 27 or 28 and all and you know he's not a guy that, that's involved in scandal and things like that so there's not really a lot of ammunition there unless you want to get racist you know and start calling him a Muslim or, or things like that which which is a disgusting thing to do right I guess he could say listen mate don't worry about Connor because I'm going to beat the shit out of you you ain't going to get to fight Connor so get Connor out of your mind you're right Ooh. I would have said that I would I, I would have said that but still it doesn't matter the fight's going to deliver and I'll go back to my earlier statement the UFC isn't in the business of putting on entertaining press conferences their business is putting on entertaining fights and that fight's going to be great the entire card will be yeah I, I think that's my argument is i'm looking at his record right now he's nine uh one and one since moving up to lightweight his last loss at featherweight was to conor mcgregor i say if i'm dustin poirier i'm unifying these belts i'm getting that win back against conor mcgregor and then i'm riding off into the sunset with a hundred million dollars s my d bro I'm Dustin Poirier. I'm 25 and five, been in the UFC forever and ever. Respect my game. Give me the respect of a top five fighter like I've been for a decade plus. Nobody knows Whoa, who he you is. Get him worked up. Who Poirier? Jeez, yeah. Don't ever say S my D. S my D, bro. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be vulgar, at least be man enough to say it. Don't use an acronym. Okay. S my D. Uh, so anyway, so that, that I mean that fight's not happening for a while. Uh, UFC 242. So we got lots going on before then. Um, what else? I I thought this Harry one. Tom. I thought this one was kind of interesting, simply because uh, as the first British champion, right? And we know uh -huh. that the UFC tried to expand into Europe for quite some time. It looks like they're making that push into Asia, especially with the Performance Institute in China. As a result, uh, or I'm asking you, I guess, is that a result of why Wiley Zhang is getting, uh, is fighting to become the first Chinese UFC champion against Jessica Andrade? Well, once again, Harrington with the loaded questions. Basically, you're saying that I got a title shot because the UFC are trying to like build a relationship in Europe. So therefore, I I got a title shot, Harrington, from slogging away, fighting the best of the best of the best of the best, beating Anderson Silva, being on a five fight win streak after having so many fights and then knocking out the champion in one round. That's why I got a title shot. Okay, buddy boy. Okay, baby boy. Doggy, stop. Finger down. Put that finger down. Put the finger down. I was going to make you head. sound like an even bigger badass, but okay, Mike, I'll sit on it. You don't need to. We're not here to, you know, to, to short my ego. Here's why. Hold on. <laughs> Wei Li Zhang. <laughs> I'm like, here's why. I'm like, hold on. What was the name again? Wei Li Zhang. Wei Li Zhang. Listen, let me tell you something. You, you're right. It, it's uh, so Jessica Andrade, for the people listening. Jessica Andrade's next fight, she's defending her title. Of course, she picked up Rose Nami Yunes, slammed her on her head, uh, won the world title in a kind of shocking sequence against uh, a very, very good champion, Rose Nami Yunes. Rose, uh, I don't think she's going to retire, even though she flirted with it. It sounds like she actually said recently she would have been interested in that fight, but they never came to her, So, and she's happy with that. So that's good. She's not going to retire because I want to see her back. Now, there's some other people out there who did you put in there? In, in, in there? Uh, so there's Tatiana Suarez. Tatiana Suarez, again, you know, I mean, she, she's looking fantastic. She could have been a good contender for uh, Jessica Andrade. Nina uh, uh, Suarez just beat Nina Lanzarev. Who else is there? I mean, listen, she's going with Wei Li Zhang, right? Wei Li Zhang, I don't know if you know this. Have you watched her fight? Have you seen her fight, Harrington? I have. Her fight against Tisha Torres uh, was on the same card, UFC 235, uh, and she looked absolutely incredible. I've been following yeah. this girl, you know, her entire UFC career. I think she's incredible. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Whaley is 19 and 1, 9 by knockout, 7 submissions. So 16 of those 19 wins are by stoppage. So this woman is a stopper. You know, she stops fights, she wins fights, knockouts, submissions. And I get it's rare at those weight classes to be, uh, you know, a finisher, not a stopper, a finisher, pardon me. Um, but she does that, and she's also very good. I mean, as you just said, I saw a fight against Tisha Torres, and I watched it. I was like, wow, this girl is sensational. She's amazing. Now she's on a three-fight win streak. You know, is that a little early for a UFC title shot? Maybe, but, it, but it's not unheard of. It's certainly not unheard of. No. And of course, 
I'd say she has the skills to be in there from what I've seen. Ariel Hawani post fight at Bellator 222 alongside Bellator president Scott Coker following the event here at Madison Square Garden. I have to say, I didn't think Scott would show up. I thought he ducked me after his uh, Warriors lost Game Six. My condolences. Thank you. Uh, you know what? It was uh, it was a uh, a tough loss, getting injured, all the but they fought like Warriors last night. But I tell you, Toronto has a great team and. Uh, I know you predicted it like a month ago. You said Toronto's going to win the, the, the championship. I didn't believe it, but you were right. So uh, hats off to you, but we'll be back next year. Yes. Well, a tough night for you guys last night. A great night for you here at MSG uh, Friday night. Uh, I want to ask you about Roy McDonald. I think there were a lot of question marks about him. I was worried about how he would look, how he would perform. What did you think of his performance? You know, I thought he um, looked really good. And clearly, you know, won the fight on all the scorecards. Uh, and when you the jujitsu on the on the ground was really spectacular, very high level you know uh, transitions going back and forth. Um, but Roy did what he does, and he, I think uh, he proved that uh, you know he's the champ, and you got to take it away from the champ. And and Neiman, I think give him another you know three, four, five fights. I think he give Roy, uh, Roy a real big run. But I think Roy clearly you know dominated this fight. You've always said that you wanted to wrap up the tournament in a year, so would that mean that you're still planning on having the finale, the rematch between Rory and Douglas Lima in September? Yeah, that's a game plan. We're going to give everybody a couple days, but um, uh, we're going to take a beat and then we're going to, uh, you know, probably have it sometime in September. And not only will we have the finals of the tournament, the welterweight tournament, in September, but we'll have the beginning of the featherweight tournament in September. We'll have all the fighters fight 16-man tournament. So we have a lot of going on. We'll be very busy. You're going to have all 16 fighters fighting on the same card, right, to kick off the tournament? Yes, that's that's the game plan. Okay. Uh, let me ask you about what happened in the co-main event. Chell Sonnen retired. Are you surprised he did so? Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, um, I didn't see it coming. Because with Chell, you know, he's had some... Uh... I tell you, here in New York, they, they don't care that we're doing an interview. Yeah. It, it was worse last time, so this is better. Oh, man. Last time it was... It, it, it's interesting, but listen, I think that Chael felt like if he lost the fight, that was it. And he just felt this was the time. And man, I tell you, I'm so honored to have him be our promoter for such, I mean, be his promoter for such a long time. And and he has given so much to this promotion. And uh, you know, we're going to continue having him as our broadcast uh, analyst. And he's uh, he's going to have a home here at Bellator as long as he wants one. That is great to hear. Now, I know next week in London, you have the middleweight title on the line, Gegard Musasi, Rafael Lovato Jr. And here you have a situation with Yona Machida where he could conceivably fight at 205 and 185 for the belt. But since the timing seems to work out better for 185, since uh, you, you guys have already said that Bader is going to defend his heavyweight title, is it more likely that his next fight will be for the 185 pound title? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, let's see what happens in the fight. And, um, you know, timing will be an issue. But I think that if those guys are healthy, they should get it on again and uh, fight for the, uh, you know, fight for Gegard's belt. Loretta looked amazing tonight. You know, I don't think he, you know, I don't think he broke his sweat that much, but, you know, he uh, he's dangerous and he can still hit, man. And so, you know, if, if uh, the fight turns out to be exceptional in London, then uh, we'll probably put that fight together before the end of the year. Your business partner, Dylan Dennis, looked good in his uh, second pro fight. What did you make of his performance? You know, a lot of people give him such a hard time, and I don't understand why. I mean, part of me does because his persona, he's out there, and he's barking, and he's talking, and he's, you know, he has a little personality on him. But the guy's got two fights, you know, and in MMA, that's nothing. Uh, and what we ask of the, the jiu-jitsu fighters is like, well, if you're going to be coming from a jiu-jitsu background, learn how to strike, learn how to use a cage, learn how to... You know, maneuver inside this, uh, you know, this platform because it's different than any other, you know, jujitsu match. He's not somebody's trying to punch you in the face, and someone's trying to really hurt you, and you're not going to just be able to, you know, tap out. And you know, so, I mean, you could you could be in a dangerous situation for a long periods of time and take a lot of damage. So, uh, but two fights, you know, I, I I can't ask any anything more of that kid. The thing that I would love to have though is frequency. With him is like, look, stay healthy, <clears throat> stay, you know. <clears throat> the thing with Khabib, I thought that he shouldn't have been punished so bad because I think, you know, he was just standing there. It was uh, Khabib came at him, and I tell Javier Mendez that all the time. Hey, your guy attacked my guy. Your guy should be punished, not my guy. But, you know, frequency, 
repetition, more experience. That's what we're going to try to get him. So as long as he's healthy, we're going to try to continue to, to fight him over and over and try to get him as many fights as we can before the end of the year. I don't know if you heard about this, but he told me uh, moments ago that he tore his LCL last week. So yeah, he fought with that. So hopefully he'll be okay and we'll be able to return soon rather than later. I want to ask you about Kyoji Yoraguchi. So could you explain the situation now that he's your champion? He has to defend the title at least once. Could it be more than once? Well, my, my deal with Saki Ibarra is that he will <clears throat> defend it once a year. Could it be more? Yes. Depending on how busy he is in Japan. But that doesn't mean we can't send over, like, for instance, um, some of our fighters want, let's say, to go to Japan and fight for the Ryzen belt, right? So, Horiguchi is the Bellator champ, and uh, he's part of the family now, and uh, we'll have access to him at least once a year, but it could be more. And finally, I want to ask you about Aaron Pico. Uh, he loses once again, this time to Adam Borsch, and now the talk is like, you know, they ruined him, Bellator ruined him, his management ruined him, he ruined his career, why is he taking these fights? How do you make sense of all of this? No one saw this coming. You know what, I think he said it best. He said, you know, I, I proved I can wrestle, and and I proved I can box, but I still need to learn how to fight, right? So, I think with Aaron, don't give up on him. You know, he still has youth at him, on his side, and to grow and to learn. And he was thrown into, uh, you know, a tough situation. But a lot of the choices were made by himself and the management. And, um, you know, we, we went along with some of this, right? But, um, you know, at the end of the day, he, he, he was this close to knocking out Henry Corrales. He was 30 seconds away from winning a fight, controlling all, all the first two rounds, I thought, and controlling the, sec the, the first half of the, the third round. So, you know, he got caught. Right, and so whether it's now or later, or you know, in his career, you know, we're gonna have to see if you know how does he react when he gets caught. That's gonna be the question now or later. So, you know, it's um, you know, he's got to take a step back. I think. I think with him, we're gonna sit down with him and his family and his, and his new manager, and, and we're gonna say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain my position. It's gonna be look, we still have a lot of faith in in Aaron, um, but I think we gotta take a real big step back and just pump the brakes and slow down. Um, and then, you know, basically reboot, reboot. If you could, would you do things differently? I mean, listen, the, the, the four fights he had where he won was a devastating fashion. You know, I don't want to say what fighter, but we were supposed to have a, one of our fighters fight in a main event fight in San Jose in the lightweight division. I saw Aaron knock this kid out in the gym. You're talking about, you know, a top 10 guy, you know, at one point. So. This kid had like 40, 50 fights. Aaron knocks him out in the gym where he was like stiff. I was like, oh my God, this guy has so much power. He's dangerous. Um, so, you know what? It, it kind of goes both ways, you know? It's like, look, what we're seeing, what the manager's seeing, you know, I mean, you know, they're saying, look, Aaron's gonna beat Michael Chandler in two fights. That's what we were sold on. We got him saying, hey, all this wrestling experience, all the, um, the, the boxing experience, um, but, you know, let's just let's just talk about where we go from here because I don't I don't I don't feel like the kid has uh, you know he has a lot to a lot to learn a lot to grow and we'll be there for him and so it's gonna be up to him I know he's upset I want to give him a couple days just to let him let him have his space but uh, we'll we'll talk to him in a couple weeks and uh, we'll see what they want to do. Thank you, Scott. Congrats on a great night and good luck next week in London. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you there, Ryder. Uh, yes, I, I will be there. And Khabib and uh, Poirier had their press conference. Now, his father, Khabib's dad, is going to be in his corner for the first time in UFC. Oh, that's awesome. And he said, obviously, because uh, they're in Abu Dhabi. And he said, obviously, I have to be Dustin. I have to be Tony Ferguson. I have to be GSP. Um, he wants to become the number one pound pound. Stop with GSP. It's not happening. GSP is not going to come in and go back down to lightweight and fight you. It's not, not going to happen. Not and to he me. already said he won't go up to feather uh, to welterweight. Well, he said he's not going. Well, why would he go up the well to wait to fight him though? Oh, that's that's weird. I just don't see a GSP wanting to come back. Well, first of all, and stay away with. Well, the thing is this: I like to be the last guy to beat GSP, so let's just let him see yeah. how he <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, no, no. I love George. I think that uh, if George came back, I'd watch it. But I think, come on, man. I think he's. He's done enough. It's so strange. His last man. fight was at what one eighty five. Yeah, his last. See, it's so funny that you know when 
It's almost it's not your fault, but you're like his last fight. You have to hesitate a second. What he did was fuck was was amazing, incredible. I mean, who? Th- I mean, I know nowadays is like almost it feels like a champ champ is coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, but uh, but to come back and beat Michael Bisping after such a layoff, and the way he did it was nothing short of I'm going to say the word again. I said <laughs> a lot the other day. It's phenomenal, yeah, Jimmy. It, was. it really is. And I use the. I, I'm still getting you. I'm, I'm gonna get more comfortable with this fucking soundboard. I look at it and I'm like, I don't trust yeah. me. I'm gonna hit the wrong fucking thing. But uh, Khabib, I'm looking forward to the fight with Dustin. I am know. too. Uh, and eventually, because I feel he's gonna pass that test, and I don't like to look too far ahead. But eventually, I would love to see him versus Tony Ferguson. Absolutely. I just think Tony Ferguson looks like a machine. And I think the longer the fight, like you really have to get something like he has to get that Kimura behind his back he has to get something about to snap because i don't tony's not tony's a type of guy like man like a zombie yeah you, just keep, you could just cowboy he was unconcerned with whatever he got caught with with cowboy yeah. and, and nothing slowed him down it's fucking no. cra- that's crazy dude yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah he's seeing the hard guy to prepare for too because he just throws so many you can't he's very unpredictable um you know he uses his, his feet and his uh hands equally he's just really fun to watch and it's fun to watch somebody try to come forward against him because you can't do it for long you come forward for a couple of punches or a kick and then you're right back to back it up again but what i say about gsp is i don't see him after fighting 185 is he going to want to go down because khabib has already said he's not going to go up to welterweight so he's going to drop 40 pounds for the like and, and fight khabib it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to Jimmy. fight it that lightweight to have to do a weight cut Again, I'm sure he's not walking around at 200 right now, but that's a drastic weight cut to fight a fucking animal like Khabib. I, I just don't see it. Nah, dude. I don't see it. I, listen, I'm looking forward to his fight with Dustin. Dustin has been on a tear, yep. and he's taken out top, top, top guys, all the top guys. So it's got that little rocky feel to it. Yeah, it does, you know? and he certainly could. I mean, he, he's been uh, punching so, so well. I, I'm taking Dustin in the second round, like I've said. Now, here's why I'm taking Poirier over Khabib. Because of who he's beaten. Now, again, I know Khabib has won some good fights, too. But, I mean, he uh, he TKO'd Pettis. He TKO'd Gaethje. TKO'd fucking Eddie Alvarez. And then goes the distance and beats Max Holloway. Poirier has looked unstoppable. Yeah. But who has he fought looking to really, really uh, put the grappling on him? Put the, put him on his ass? Yeah, who? I mean, I, I would, I would I'm say... Uh, who? Yeah. I'm not a fucking owl. Who? 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 Who, Jimmy? Jimmy, look at me right now. Who? <laughs> that's Jimmy, a, that's Jimmy, a good point. Look at me right now. See how jolly However, I am? However, we saw what happened when uh, Brian Ortega wanted to put the grappling on fucking... Uh, he wanted to take yeah, uh, Holloway I, down. That I didn't love, work. I love Ortega, but Ortega's a fin- amazing with jiu-jitsu. Yes. Great standing up. The wrestling, it, it's not on the level of getting it to the ground. Isn't on the level as of Khabib right. getting it on the ground. That's, you know That's what I mean? true. Very true. Oh, a hundred percent. But I just you mean, know? you know, we all have plans, and I just see, I, I see Khabib coming in, Jeez. and I see Poirier landing a booming left in the second round and dropping him. Dude, nobody else agrees with me. I don't want to. Uh... I told Dustin that, and I'm saying it publicly again. I'm calling. And we all know I am frequently wrong. Let me give an applause. Look who just came in. Let me give an applause. Oh. That's good applause. That's a good... I'm I'm doing it again when you get on... Hold on a second. Funkmaster, what do you need? You want a coffee? You want a drink? What do you want? I'm starving. I can't wait to eat. Somebody get him a fucking steak. Why can't you eat? I I can't wait to eat. Oh, you can. You guys have a coffee? What are you doing after this? Getting some food. Where are you going, you know? Uh, no, I'm down to go wherever. We'll get, we're gonna go somewhere. Ready to snack and yeah, get large. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. How, how long will you give yourself? I mean, you know, after the fight, like, what, like a week or two where you can just kind of eat like shit, or what will you do? Just about a week or two. Um, I was actually trying to keep my figure. I already lost my six pack. So, oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, man. I'm like 165 already. I checked this morning and, uh, I want to try to keep some type of shape for the summer. How's the feedback so far, Aljo? Aljo, we got to talk about the rankings now. You went up. Yeah. You know that, Jimmy. Do you know that? Yeah. What does Aljo know? What do you know? But you're two, I haven't right? seen the list. Are you two? Marlon, right? I, I didn't even check yet, but uh, fact that's good to that. know. Well, I guess we can fact check that. They well, it should be on our fact sheet. I'm going to say he's number two, right behind Marlon. And I think that's yeah. amazing, Aljo, and well-deserved. You know what, I'm, know what I'm really excited about? Your last two fights, 
versus top notch strikers. Guys that mm -hmm. guys that put people to sleep, have put people to sleep, hurt people, Jimmy, standing up. They hurt people. Mm -hmm. Aljo beat them both standing up. Yep. There wasn't any takedowns or any any um, any groundwork. And to, to speak of, well, t a tiny bit maybe with Jimmy when you threatened some shit and he got out of your guard. But that, what does that do for your confidence? It doesn't surprise me that we have to be, well, I want to know anyway, because this dude is, I haven't seen you since the fight, at which was whatever, a fucking few days ago. But it's, you know, you did it with Jimmy. Now, to do what you did, I mean, you, you know, you, you with the, what you did standing up with the game plan with Jimmy, we didn't get it to the floor. To do that again with Pedro, who just knocked out the former champ, Cody Garbrandt, is a fucking is a fucking feat what you did man it's huge like how, how do you feel how's your confidence through the roof man that was a cloud nine experience if i can ever remember one you know that was like the culmination of all the hard work all the years of hitting pads everything you know the training sessions and long days the sacrifices man it, it was all worth it you know and that's that's one of the things you never know you like you you do all that hard work, you do all that time and training, and you never know if you're for sure going to get the win because anything can happen once you step in there. But to go out there and, and put on that type of performance, I, you know, watching it back, I was like, dude, I can't believe that's me, man. That's insane. <laughs> you were using your range really well. I mean, you were you was fast. You were getting in and getting out. There was a couple of moments where well, you kind of looked like you were standing there trading with him. Yeah. And, and I'm like, that, they were like, oh, you shouldn't stand there and trade with him. What made you do that? You know what? It, it's kind of like pacing the fight. You know, you can't be on your bike the entire time you can try but you fatigue a little bit faster than you want to you know that's a lot of movement it's uh it's a lot of energy that's that gets expended and i did slow down a few times where i need to like recoup and be like all right let's recharge the battery pack a little bit and then get back on our bike you know so i made sure i was aware of that whenever he was coming in so i tried to uh try to slow him down with the striking a little bit and then when i felt like he was picking up momentum or getting a little overconfident then we get back on the bike and pop him with something and then get back on on the uh, cutting the angles and things like that he seemed like he was doing a decent job of cutting the cage <laughs> off too he, he was doing a decent job of not just completely chasing you but kind of kind of cutting yeah he was heading me off the right way man he he did his homework and i said it people were saying that uh i outclassed him i mean i outstruck him i don't i wouldn't it's hard, it's hard for me to use the words outclass because he did land some pretty solid strikes it's not like he was sitting there and wasn't offering back any offense whatsoever so i give him respect where it's due and he definitely hurt me he hurt me to the body one time in the second round and i and i acknowledged it in the middle of the fight and i kind of let him know like yeah you got me a good one and uh that's when i had to get back did on you the bike. smile there what did you do I, I smiled and i did like a little grimace oh. and i kind of like shook my head and he knew he knew he hurt me and i was like <laughs> yeah you did you hurt me a little bit but i'm not gonna let you get anything off of, off of this and i just got on my bicycle, recovered a little bit, and then I was able to get back on my offense. Were there any moments against the cage? There's a couple of times, you, you didn't spend a whole lot of time you back against the cage, but you know, because I know you, I, was, I wanted you to win, so every time you were against the cage, I'm like, fuck, get out of there! Were there any moments where you were against it when you're like, I gotta move now, or this is gonna be a, a problem? Uh, not, not really like a problem. I knew he could hurt me if my back was against the cage for too long. Uh, he could start picking up momentum, getting getting overly confident, then I should give him, you know, you give someone an inch, sometimes they take a yard or yeah. they take a mile, and we, we made sure we talked about that, and that was the, the game plan. Don't give this guy any type of window of opportunity to 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 feel strong or or build that extra momentum to, to have, one, the, the judges and the crowd and himself, because and, you never know what, what happens when you start to feel a little confidence and you feel like you might be able to get the guy. Sometimes you end up do getting the guy. And, uh, uh, you know, just breaking it down, I watched it a few times. When I got back to the room, everyone said, oh, you took a lot of damage against the cage. I was like, dude, I feel like I took more damage. Team Monkeys in here. We need to liven this place up. I'm all about tanks right now, bro. I'm tanked up. All right, let's get into some fights. While we're in Vegas, uh, Tyson Fury fight was going on there. A lot of Tyson Fury fans. Everyone thought I was there because uh, the Tyson Fury fight. Nope, don't work for ESPN or Bob Arum. Remember, I'm a Showtime guy, so I wouldn't be there. I was there to slang some jokes and sip down some whiskey with some lot lizards in Vegas. So, um... Tyson Fury, man, took care of business. Thank God, too. Took care of business. And what's interesting about this is... Uh, you know, with everything going on in the heavyweight division with Deontay Wilder fucking starching Brazil in the fucking first round, Joshua getting outshined, right? Uh, so I felt like 
for Tyson Fury to be considered the best heavyweight on the planet, he needed a great performance. He couldn't win via decision. And again, he's not a knockout artist, but he's the most technical heavyweight in the world. And to remain number one, he had to come up with a big result. And that's exactly what we got. He absolutely annihil annihilated this guy. Um, outclassed him. You, I'm sure you saw the highlights where he's just slipping all the punches. It looks like he's on the Matrix. Here's why this is impressive. He's 200 and fucking 60 something pounds at 6'8 doing that. 6'9. Six, 6'9. Nine. Six, nine. It's insane how good that man is at boxing. It's insane. He's near, your number one heavyweight on the planet living right now, bar none. Um, I can't wait to see the rematch between him and Wilder. What's interesting, you know, is him doing this and then what Wilder did to Brazil. It's just the it's just delaying what we want to see, right? Like, uh, you know, Wilder starching Brazil. That was cool. Almost killed the guy. All right, cool. Starts him in the first round. Uh, Fury doing this to Schwartz. All right, cool, man. But it's just like it's just delay. You just you're giving everyone blue balls. Well, it's just you're just giving us blue balls. It's at the strip club, man. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this isn't what we want. This is just blue balls. So everything that doesn't equal Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder or Joshua, uh, and I can insert uh, Andy into that. So, you know, it, if it doesn't involve the big three, you're just giving everyone blue balls. You're just giving everyone blue balls. Thank God Fury came ready to fight. And um, not that he never hasn't come to fight. He's he's that guy who always shows up for work but you know off i think anthony joshua overlooked ruiz and you know he paid a heavy heavy price but um with fury thank god he didn't lose thank god it would have completely fucked everything so um yeah tyson fury is the best heavyweight on the planet and i can't wait to see him and and deontay wilder go at it um so that being said there were some other fights going on which I was able to watch on Bellator on DAZN. Good card, man. Good card. Good fights. Really good fights. Um, really, really good fights, to be honest. And I saw damn near all of them, even the prelims. Um, I guess we'll probably kick it off with our uh, boy Aaron Pico. Our boy Aaron Pico. I warned you guys. I warned you guys. And uh, even my boy Daniel over here used to work for Bellator goes, dude, Adam Borix is no joke. I don't like this fight. I, went, I don't like the fight either. Uh, I told you guys, this, this is going to be a tough one for Aaron Pico. I didn't like it for him. And um, it was tough to watch because obviously Aaron Pico, he's at Jackson's now. They come up with the greatest game plans on, on the earth. And he has a really f team around him. You know, he, he was kind of getting pulled in all these directions. So I thought by him going to Jackson's and it, it appeared that way early on that he wasn't going to take risks. He was going to use his grappling, which is superior in his wrestling, wear the guy out and then maybe exchange, which is what he was doing. He looked great. Obviously, Adam could not stop his takedowns. Um, Adam is the bigger guy, longer ranger guy. So Pico really didn't, he just kind of eliminated the opening um, kind of KO situation by using his grappling. Perfect. It's exactly what we want to see. And then in the second round, with a minute left, uh, they separate and Adam Borix does a fly, basically a flying, jumping double knee where it's up, boom. Yeah. And here, here's where it gets dicey. Because, um, you know, when say Houston, we have a problem. Pico, we got a huge problem. Because it's a it, it shitty situation. And uh, Rogan said it best. Um, I text Rogan, I go, fuck, dude. Pico got knocked out again. And uh, he goes, how? I went flying knee. He was doing so well. He uses, uses his footwork, using his game plan. And then uh, Rogan saw the highlight and goes, the shitty thing is, and he's right. Uh, I, I don't want to take credit for this. This is Rogan saying this. He said uh, that knee would have knocked anybody out. It landed flush. The problem is, is Pico has been knocked out several times before, right? He's been knocked out three or four times, twice. He got guillotine, then two knockouts. So we, we've seen him get knocked out. The the MO with him, right, is like, it's like, come on. He, he had that slugging fest last time, gets caught, right, when he got knocked out. So it, it appeared that he was with the right camp, the right game plan, and then this fucking flying knee uh, happens, and it's just, 
it would have knocked out anybody. But because it's Pico, it's a tough one. It's a tough pill to swallow, man. It's a tough, tough pill. So he's four and three. Um, and Houston, you do have a problem. If, if you're in the Pico camp, and you guys know I've, I've always been very high in Pico, I still think he's going to turn out to be a phenomenal fighter. But there, there has to... There has to be a real kind of uh, self-reflective kind of look into the mirror for Aaron Pico and figure out exactly what's going on here. Um, again, the shitty thing is, is that knee would have knocked anybody out. So if that didn't happen, he probably would have passed this test flying colors, but it did happen. So um, I don't know if it's a matter of a chin issue. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say because that knee landed so flush. It's a flying knee, so it's kind of, it's kind of a shitty deal. Worst case scenario for Aaron Pico, um, and, and I see you know a lot of people going, oh, he needs different management. He needs a different camp. It's not the camp. It's not the management at this point. It's Aaron Pico at this point. So there's he's been with AKA, he's been with TJ Dillashaw's team, and now he's been at Greg Jackson's, and he's had losses at all of them. So I think we got to quit making excuses for him, and it's it's just not. It's not the team, man. It's a, it's a, it's, it's the fighter. It's the fighter. I'm not ready to hang up the gloves on Aaron Pico and go, nope, told you. All right, he's a bust. No, no, no. He, he's not a bust. Um, I think this was worst case scenario for him. Um, you know, he, the, the problem with him is, and the problem with MMA is, guys don't get any build up fights, and guys don't want to fight Aaron Pico, so he's being forced to fight. You know, guys that really he could use a little more kind of seasoning. But we don't want that. We want the John Jones. Jones kind of fucked up for everyone, not his fault, because jo Jones flourishes in this department. But he kind of fucked up for everyone. Everyone wants every big prospect to be John Jones. Well, John Jones is the greatest of all time. There's only one, but we want to compare everyone to that. Same thing in boxing. Everyone wants to go, oh, a loss, you're fucked. Well, Floyd Mayweather fucked it up for everyone because he's 50 and 0. Well, that's that's boxing. No, it's not, man. Some of the greats lost. Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, uh, Mike Tyson. Foreman, Ali, some of the greats have lost and go on to have great fights. So don't just don't don't take it just because one guy went down on defeated road or one guy had no fucking uh road bumps on the way to become greatness in John Jones. That's not everyone's story. And also, uh, it's a bad example, but you know, Max Holloway started off four and three in his UFC career. The only difference is Max Holloway wasn't getting starched. So so that's that's the difference there. Um, I just think um, this was a freak accident. I don't think you should ride off Aaron Pico. I still think he has a lot of work to do. I still think he's going to be a great, great fighter, especially at featherweight. Um, you know, maybe maybe it's a, this is a matter of Adam Borix is a monster. How about that? Adam Borix is very, very good. He's undefeated. We probably sh should probably pay more attention to him. Um, and I think Aaron Pico just needs to... And he, if he hasn't learned it yet, maybe humble himself and, and fight guys, you know, I, I, and again, he's going. No one wants to fight you, man. So these are guys that have to fight. If if I'm if I'm uh, Scott Coker, I'm gonna basically force guys to fight him. You know, he, and they can do that. Listen, the UFC. If you say no to fighting the UFC, you're fucked, man. I, maybe Scott Coker needs to apply a little more pressure on guys and and force kind of these these other up and comers to fight in Pico. So he's not doing such a huge jump. But this is the other problem with MMA is. Bellator is the major leagues. The UFC is the major leagues. When you get there, you really don't have the tools and the time to develop skills. You better be ready to go. Otherwise, your career is going to be a lot, lot shorter. You better be ready to go. So I, I think as a manager, as a coach, we shouldn't rush guys to get to the big leagues. Because, yeah, you can have maybe three or four fights in the UFC or Bellator and get cut and go back to the regional circuit. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.